The Perseverance rover is tasked with carrying out what is perhaps the most important task in human history, to seek out life on another alien planet. It's a pretty big deal. After a month on Martian soil, what's been discovered so far? Welcome to Fact Nominal, and we're going back to the Red Planet. What the Perseverance rover discovered in one month since landing on Mars. After constant media coverage for the last couple of years, we finally have confirmation. Perseverance has touched down on Mars safely and is doing exactly what it meant to be doing. It's perhaps a little cynical, but you'd expect nothing less than 100% success and a flawless operation from a spacecraft with a price tag of $2.2 billion. Now that doesn't mean the mission has been without its tense moments, however. The 300 million mile journey from Earth to Mars took a little over seven months to complete. Now, during this time, any number of things could have gone wrong. Collision with space debris can be catastrophic when you're careening through space at 24,600 miles per hour. Computers are both reliable and unreliable at the same time. A full system shutdown and fail was a distinct possibility after all. There's no one on board to turn it off and on again then there's also the slight chance of the spacecraft being intercepted by an alien race. Unlikely, sure, but it was a possibility. Thankfully, E.T. let Perseverance continue on its way. The task at hand. The Perseverance has come to Mars to do two things. Find signs of life and report back home. We already know with a high degree of certainty that there has been water on Mars in the past. And there's evidence it still exists in great underground reservoirs beneath the surface. The big question that needs to be answered is whether the presence of that water was enough to give organic molecules like amino acids the kickstart they need to form RNA and DNA protein strands, the building blocks of genetics. To quote the very famous 90s movie about the perils of bringing dinosaurs back from extinction, life will find a way. The little rover will do its own analysis with a tool belt filled with onboard equipment and sensors, but also leave collected soil samples on the red planet in its wake as it makes its way along the clay colloid surface of the Jezero Crater, a place we think is an ancient river delta. The rationale is that if there's any fossilized evidence of microbial life, it'll be the place where great rivers used to meet to dump any material washed away from elsewhere on Mars. This is perhaps the most important research in human history. The age-old question of, are we alone in the universe, could be answered. If we do find evidence of microbial life, who's to say that life couldn't exist in a more advanced form elsewhere in our galaxy or the universe? Hitting the ground running, after completing its perilous journey and harrowing seven minutes of terror descent through the thin Martian atmosphere, the Perseverance has touched down and pretty much started getting to work as soon as it arrived on Mars. An image sent back to NASA shows just how sketchy the descent down to the planet really was. The photos were of the rover itself approaching, parachute deployed, retro rockets firing, dust being kicked up by the reverse thrust just seven feet from the ground, the first to be sent back to Earth. This captured moment was inspirational and exciting in the same way that high-res images of distant parts of the cosmos are. Something new and never seen before. Once on the ground, the second image showed a panoramic shot of the Martian landscape as it stretches out towards distant peaks and a blue-tinged horizon. Weirdly, on Mars, the sky appears bright red when it's far away from the sun, as it's less than 1% the density of Earth's. Generally, the thicker the atmosphere, the bluer the sky, and the redder a sunset or sunrise is. But here, the disk of the sun itself appears white. There is a slight blue hue affecting the halo of light around it during sunrise and sunset. This has nothing to do with clouds, atmospheric gas, or water, and everything to do with dust. These fine particles are just on thousandth the thickest of a human hair because they're smaller than the wavelength of visible light, appear bright in the blue portion of the spectrum while remaining invisible in red light. The sky can appear more red or bluer depending on how much dust is thrown up into the atmosphere by raging storms on the surface. 
The third initial image was a close-up of the right wheel of the rover and a more detailed look at the rocks, soil, and debris that covers the Martian surface. First things first. The initial phase of operations was just a whole heap of calibration. The first 10 days involved firing some pyrotechnic devices to release the covers on the 23 onboard cameras, confirming its exact location on the Martian surface and establishing the base systems, thermal, power, and communications. A problem with any of this trio of functions would prematurely end the mission. The two-ton rover is powered by a radioisotope thermoelectric generator. In short, heat from the decaying plutonium will supplement collected solar energy with the intention of greatly prolonging the rover's lifespan and preventing it from icing up from the extremely low nighttime temperatures. So it was important to get this system up and running ASAP. Next up was testing out the robotic arm and initiate a very short movement test to ensure the six-wheeled drivetrain was in good working order. The Perseverance managed to record a 16-minute audio file of just how noisy its metal wheels are when crunching over rocks and debris sent it back to Earth. The Ingenuity Over the next 11 to 60 days, the two-foot-high Mars Ingenuity tucked underneath the Perseverance belly commenced test flights and would technically be the first helicopter to fly on an alien world. With four spinning rotors like a drone, the Ingenuity flew further and further away from the stationary Perseverance, and it still discovered its limitations and capabilities in such a thin atmosphere. It's a vital prelude to developing more robust aerial reconnaissance drones for use of future astronaut manned missions to Mars. Over the course of 30 days, five autonomous test flights will last up to 90 seconds each, flying low and short building up to longer and longer distances away. The Ingenuity can perform only one attempt per day before it needs to recharge. The Mythology of Geology Also, during this 11 to 60 day period, the rover wasted no time in pulling up its sleeves focusing on the geology phase of the mission. Right now it's taking happy snaps of the surrounding rock formations as well as close-ups of the rock and soil that litters the surface of the red planet. It's been surveying nearby rocks, sending the findings of the chemical analysis back to Earth for NASA scientists to study, interpret, and draw findings from. These initial tests are still part of the calibration process of the drill, close-up cameras, and laser spectrometer. The initial images of the landing site showed lighter colored rocks poking out from a darker colored soil. Spectral analysis from the onboard laser spectrometer of two rocks dubbed Maz and Yiko, Navajo Indian for Mars and Diligent, show that they're chemically similar to basalt found on Earth, a rock formed from molten lava. The laser zaps the rock and atomizes a minute amount of material that is then analyzed by the spectrometer. That data is then beamed back to Earth where it's sorted, quantified, and extrapolated. Already, the analysis shows signs of water having been captured inside the rock during its rapid cooling process and solidification. This points to the fact that liquid water existed on Mars at a time when it had a hot molten core, essentially lava flow from a volcano that met a water source. Looking at the wind erosion on one of the rocks showed that the markings follow a northwesterly pattern on par with major wind pattern models calculated based on what we think are circulation patterns on Mars. The other rock appeared smoothened and as though it were shaped by tumbling along the bottom of one of the rivers that fed the Jezero crater delta. This bolsters the current working theory on which the entire mission was based that the Jezero Crater was the collector for a series of ancient river systems. What lies ahead? The main mission directive is focused around the hunt for evidence of past microbial life. By the 60 to 100 day period, the prep work on the Dilbit close-up camera and chemical sensor array will be complete and it will be time to start getting answers. The Perseverance will have to travel on its landing site near the outskirts of the Jezero Crater, 40 miles towards the interior of what scientists think was an ancient river delta. The abundance of clay colloids and an uncanny resemblance to the Nile River Delta here on Earth 
means it's the most likely place to uncover fossilized remains of ancient microbial Martian life. There are various areas of interest along the way where sample tubes will be filled with Martian soil and left on the surface for later collection. The RIMFAX instrument, a super advanced ground penetrating radar, will begin its search for subterranean deposits of liquid water or ice. The MEDA instrument will start recording complex data on Martian weather patterns to establish tolerances for future missions. The experimental MOXIE instrument in the belly of the rover will attempt to produce oxygen from the carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere. If we're ever going to get boots on Mars, we need a surefire way to harvest oxygen to keep our astronauts safe and healthy. Think of it like a mechanical tree.